everyone, it's TJ, your friendly neighbourhood youth worker, and I'm here bringing you another video. This time we're going to be talking about the DAV approved Van Gogh folding gas stove, which is used on DAV expeditions um, all across the place. So before we get started, what we need to do is get all our equipment together, everything, all our food, all the things that we're going to need, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so the, the stove itself comes in a little box like this, which is quite handy, it's uh, pretty tough. And the only thing is the, the stove inside doesn't come with any padding, so try not to knock it around too much, uh, because we're, you're going to be using gas on these. What we don't want is any connections to come loose, otherwise the gas will leak. But it's quite easy to take out, it comes uh, lightly wrapped up, and it essentially looks something like this. Now to open it up, all you do is you pull these arms out. That will give it a nice base for your pots and pans, okay? But then to sit on the ground at the moment, all it's got is that. So underneath here, if you can see, these fold out and you have these little legs that come out as well. And then that provides you with a pretty nice stand where the bottom is just off the ground and you've got a nice base for things to sit on, the pots and pans, like that. Okay, so that's how you set it up. So we're going to go outside and we're going to set it up properly now. Okay, so today I'm going to be making some hot chocolate. Um, I've taken everything out that I need. So I've got my water and my hot chocolate. That's the most important part. I've got my stove to cook on. I've got my mug and a spoon um, to make that. I've also got a bowl here. If any of you like making food, then obviously don't forget your bowl. I'm not making any food today, but you know, it's something that you'll need. Because it's a gas stove, I also have my gas cylinder. Just make sure the gas cylinder is one that works with your gas stove. Um, so these ones have a screw cap on it, and that's the, the same fitting as that. And also make sure if you do use your own gas stoves that they're self-sealing. I've also got a way of lighting my flame and I have my pot in order to uh, heat my water up. I've also chosen a pot with a lid uh, just because it will boil a little bit faster if you've got a lid. Some people notice that I have really long hair. Um, now if you do have long hair like myself what you don't want to do is have it all dangling about and you've probably seen it in the start of the videos and stuff like that just flying about and with uh, around an open fire okay so with any hair, tuck it away, tie it up, put it out of the way. So now my hair's tied up, the next thing I'm gonna do is I need to find somewhere flat uh, in order to cook. So I don't want it anywhere where there's gonna be a big slope. I don't want it where it's gonna be un unstable. Luckily enough, right here, I have a nice flat base here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach my gas stove. So it's real simple. All you do is get the end here, you get the bottle here, you line it up, and then you turn the bottle and it pretty much catches itself like that. Okay, once that's done, I normally like to have the gas stove near me, uh, the gas canister next to me, and the fire further away. We need to make sure that there's no one else around, or at least no one who's going to accidentally run into it and end up getting caught on fire or knocking our fire over and causing more problems. So. From this point onwards, you should not leave this unattended, okay? The other thing to think about is because we're using gas, um, we don't want lots of gas everywhere. If we do like this and there's a gas leak, it could set off the gas all over the place. So if you smell any gas, wait for a moment, a couple of seconds, and see if the gas smell disappears. If it doesn't, unscrew this, screw it back on, and then if you can still smell gas, is just check along here to see if there's a gas leak there. It might be that this is broken, there's a gas leak on it, in which case we do not want to use this, okay? So, I've got this in place, I've got this in place. Now our gas is limited, so I don't want to switch this on right now, because if I do that, I'm gonna be burning gas, and I'm not doing anything with it, okay? So, I'm gonna get my pot, make sure it's clean, and then I'm gonna add my water to it. I don't wanna boil too much water, because I only need as much as I need. And the more water you boil, the longer it's gonna take, which means the more fuel you're gonna use. And if you don't end up using all that water, well, then you've just wasted all of that fuel. So I'm gonna work out how much water I need, pour that in, and I'm gonna pop my lid back on it. 
okay? I'm now ready to go. If you're cooking food, make sure you've got your food in the pan before you light it all up. Popping my, um, my pot to the side. You can switch this on by just turning this a little bit. It's, it's like an, a, a gas hob at home, if you've got a gas hob at home. You just turn this, the more you turn it, the more gas comes out. Give it a quick test, make sure there is gas coming out. I can smell that, so I'm gonna give it a second just to let it kind of dissipate. Check my, check my lighter works, and it does. So I'm gonna take my lighter, I'm gonna get my lighter going, I'm gonna hold it next to the gas, I'm then gonna turn the gas up, okay? The reason is, if your lighter doesn't work, um, you'll, you'll know before you switch the gas on, hopefully. Um, but also, once you start, once you switch this gas on, you're gonna have gas coming out. So you don't want to switch that on, and this isn't working. You're like clicking it, clicking it, clicking it, and you just got gas everywhere. Okay. So I'm gonna make sure that's lit. That's lit. And then I'm gonna turn this, and that is now lit. Okay. And I'm gonna stick this on here. Turn this up, and we'll wait until the water's boiled. Now something to note while you're doing this, while you're waiting, is you know, don't have your gas canister right up close to this. You still want to keep a bit of distance on it. You know, this pipe work here is quite long for a reason, um, or at least a foot away, so you can keep it about a foot away. While I'm waiting, I can set up my hot chocolate, get that into my mug, have it all ready, so I don't have to mess about and wait later on when you know my hands start getting cold, I can just pull the water in and hold the hot mug straight away okay so my water is now boiling you can tell it's boiling because it's all like steam coming out and the lids moving all over the place so all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off I can then pour my water into my cup now do this carefully especially if you don't have a handle have it somewhere away where it's not going to make too much of a, a problem if it does spill and then I normally like to angle my cup Especially if I'm holding it and it doesn't have, it doesn't have a thing. I like to keep my fingers far away, holding it like this, and then pouring it in like this. Keep close to the ground because if you do drop this or if you spill stuff everywhere, it's, there's going to be less splash, uh, splashing of things. Give it a nice stir, and there you have it. A cup of hot chocolate. A couple of safety pointers um, when it comes to using this stove. One, if you can smell gas, stop using it, switch it off, check it, um, and wait a couple of seconds to make sure the gas smell goes away. If it doesn't, there may be a more serious problem and you don't want to be using a leaky gas stove. Second thing is never use gas stoves in your tent. Um, Gas is heavier than air, uh, there is a chance that you could end up suffocating uh, in there. So don't use gas stoves in a tent, um, and especially at night, if you're not using it, don't put your gas canister in the tent. Okay, leave your gas canister outside. You may want to cover it up if, it's, if you're somewhere cold and just make sure it's kind of insulated, uh, but do not put it in the tent that you're sleeping in, just in case there is a leak. The other reason you don't use a, a stove in your tent is your tents will, you know, burn. They will melt. Um, they will go up in flames. You know, you don't want to be inside um, and your tent gets caught on fire. Uh, these are really lightweight tents when it comes to deer beer wood. Um, and, you know, th they are really important that you keep them safe and well. That is your, you know, last line of defense against all the elements and everything like that. So, you know, don't cook in your tent for those two reasons. If you have long hair, and I've mentioned this before, if you have long hair, tie it back, okay? Uh, tuck it into your, into your jumper or something like that. Um, and use, um, you know, lighting equipment which is safe. And sometimes even having a backup lighter is useful in case the first lighter runs out of fuel or breaks or, you know, people don't know how to use it or something like that. Make sure that um, there is always someone with the fire, especially once it's lit. Do not leave it unattended. So when you're cooking, uh, make sure your stove is at least two meters um, away from your tent. I think the, the, the guidance is twice the height of the tent away from the tent. 
Um, so I say two to three meters, pretty decent amount of space. It's not just two meters away from your tent, make sure you're two meters away from all tents. And also make sure you're using the right fuel uh, for your stove. So those are my tips and that's uh, my little tutorial on how to use it. Good luck with your expedition and good luck with your cooking and I hope you have an amazing time. Ciao.